This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We didn't get our, our weekend catch-up, Gareth, uh, but it was bank holiday, so we're doing it uh, Tuesday afternoon now. Uh, Gareth, yeah, let's reflect on the weekend. Uh, Parker getting the, a narrow win. Um, a lot of people thought Chisora won the fight. There were people who thought Parker won the fight. How did you read it? Yeah, I mean, from my position, I was in the arena. Yeah, I, I had... Um, Chisora just pipping it really um you know it was a split decision it could have gone either way I mean I think Joseph Parker even admitted that afterwards he wasn't sure he'd won the fight but he was streetwise in the final analysis in the fight and Derek was his kind of very aggressive uh come forward ebullient self you know and you know that's why he was kind of pulling Eddie Hearn by his mop afterwards saying come on get me a rematch or get me on the Tyson Fury Anthony Joshua undercard um you know you can understand his thinking he put a lot of effort into that fight um and you know on reflection I haven't watched it back but you know and on reflection it was very close and he did a grand job he took a couple of rounds off towards the end he was exhausted he did what he had to do I mean he nearly got Parker out of there early on didn't he um you know, but, um, you know, you have to admire um, Derek or Del Boy because he, uh, he, he he brings it every time. He, he, the, the effort was extraordinary. Do you think we see a rematch then? I, I, I'd like to be kind and say yes, but I don't think people will be clamouring for that rematch. And I think even though Parker acknowledged afterwards he would run it back, I think he probably wants to get in the title picture if he can at all it's a very um it's a very um kind of blockaded uh top of the division at the moment isn't it dillian white deserves a title shot we don't know in this moment what's happening with tyson fury and anthony joshua alexander usik's there as a challenger to joshua there's talk of Deontay Wilde. We're going to say white is there in the mix as the wbc interim title so maybe if none of those things is available for Parker, he does roll it back with Chisora. I mean, it was a, it was a very it wasn't an entertaining fight um, to watch in terms of thrills and excitement. It was a rugged um, it was a rugged affair. It was messy at times, a lot of holding. But you know, I think Parker didn't do the damage to Chisora early in the fight that he intended to and hit him on the way in. And he, and he was recovering for three or four rounds and it gave Derek the upper hand in the early part of the fight. Okay. You mentioned uh, Fury there. Uh, obviously we've seen Bob Arum have a little outburst recently saying this fight is categorically off and that potentially the Wilder fight might happen. We've seen Frank Warren make some comments saying, you know, it, it's likely it could happen, but definitely won't be July. And he's kind of suggesting it'll be later in the year. And obviously, Eddie's saying this fight is is imminent. So, first question is: Have you spoke to Tyson recently about this at all? No, I haven't spoken to Tyson. I'm. I, I, there's no need to. I mean, that you know, that I don't think you know. His team are clearly looking at contracts that are flying back and forth at the moment. Um, you know, you can surmise by you know the piece I did with Bob Arum last week, where he was saying it was dead in the water for this summer. And then the more the more positive comments, the, the 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 response from Eddie Hearn as well, saying you know we are still battling away with the contract, contracts, um, and and on Saturday Frank Warren being more optimistic that they were getting somewhere. Um, privately, in my conversations with um, people on Fury's side, they weren't as optimistic on Saturday as Eddie was being, um, but obviously. They are all on Zoom calls at the moment. The lawyers are head down in the paperwork because they want to get everybody's agreement and get it over the line by, you know, where are we Tuesday? By Thursday, Friday this week. And maybe they can announce it at the Billy Joe Saunders, Saul Canelo Alvarez fight in Texas. Um, but these, there are lots of things to iron out clearly in the contract from what I've heard. Um, you know, the, the Saudis want to do their due, due diligence given that we hear that they're putting 150 million US dollars, 107 million pounds into this contest, that they they want their say in the fight. It's not simply a site fee, um, which what 
is which is what a lot of us assumed uh, at one time. You know, they've got to say and they want to say in the promotion. So lots of things to iron out. I hope it happens. I hope it gets signed off. It will be horrible to lose this enormous fight. Um, it, it's got all. I'm, I feel almost exhausted talking about it. So um, it's been an exhausting process. I mean, when you think that Eddie Hearn said adamantly on December the 12th after Joshua had beaten Kubrat Pulev that, you know, on Monday they get around the table and here we are on, what is it, May the 4th? May the 4th? May the 3rd? Um, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you then, yeah? Um, uh, my, my fellow Sith or Jedi, whatever you are, I think we're probably Siths rather than Jedi because we're probably dark forces deep down. Um, it's a, I don't, not a Star Wars fan, so... No, 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 neither am I particularly, but, but um, I'm just playing. But the, the, you know, we, we all want it over the line one way or another and want to know, is Wilder Fury 3 going to happen? Is Usyk going to challenge um, as mandatory challenge for the WBO with, with, with Joshua? And are we going to be on tenthooks to see if Fury and Joshua come through and we get a big fight at the end of the year in the UK, maybe a, Car in Cardiff at the Millennium uh, Stadium, where there's a where there's a retractable roof, or is are they going to take the risk of doing it in October, um, you know, outside at, in Wembley, or even in Vegas or America or wherever it's possible to have a massive crowd? But you know, it's one of those. If it doesn't happen, it'll be a great tragedy. If it does happen, we'll all be traipsing off to the Middle East. Last question on this, because you know, as you said, we've talked to death about this subject. Just your honest opinion, Gareth. Do you believe this fight happens either this summer at all this year? Does this fight take place at all this year, in your opinion, Gareth? Well, I just gave you my honest opinion. I mean, you know, my honest opinion is I genuinely think they are trying to iron out lots of wrinkles in the contract. And I and, I, and it's happening right now as we speak. They 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 if they can't come, you know. Bob Arum rang me last week. I didn't ring him. He rang me and he spoke to me about it. And I think, you know, you can look at it however you want. There's, all, there's lots of politics at this level in boxing. And he could have been pushing the hand of Eddie Hearn. I think he was genuine in saying, honestly, we are struggling with this contract. There's so many points to get over. I can see it taking weeks and weeks. But there is an urgency. And I think my feeling is they will get it over the line. You know, that my feeling is they will get it over line because I think everybody wants it, particularly the two fighters, because they don't want to lose this opportunity. Not only is it the opportunity to become undisputed champion, the amount of money they can earn is astronomical. And everybody's head is turned by money in some ways. So, you know, my, my instinct is, yeah, it will happen. But, you know, there's a huge rumor mill in boxing. And, you know, like you, I speak to a lot of people and a lot of people don't feel it will happen. Um, but I think they are doing their utmost at the moment. My instinct is they will get it over the line, but it needs to be done in the next 48, 72 hours. Otherwise, I think people will move on. OK, before we do a separate clip on Canelo and Billy Joe, just get another quick word from the weekend. We can't forget... We've got a new world champion from this country, Sonny Edwards, with a, a masterclass uh, against Mariti Mafalane. Um, what did you make of his performance, Sonny? He got a lot of praise for it. Yeah, it was a brilliant performance. It was. Uh, someone said to me, "Oh, it reminds me of Joe Calzaghe against Jeff Lacey." It wasn't quite that for me, um, but I think Sonny Edwards showed brilliant elusiveness, the perfect game plan. Uh, under Grant Smith, isn't it? I nearly said Dalton Smith. I, oh. I think Grant's a fantastic coach, a uh, trainer, and I think he'll get great credit as Dalton, and his son, comes through as well. I think they're a great combination. Um, I think he was brilliant for Sonny. The, like I say, the game plan was spot on. Um, I think he bamboozled the champion, and he rightfully deserves a lot of praise and credit for it. I think he needs to develop still, which he will. I think he needs more pop in his punches. Um, but it, you cannot fault it. It was faultless. It was a brilliant performance. I, I mean, I gave him every round. You know, you, you, it was hard to give the champion a round, you know? So that was brilliant in itself. Oh! 